Oh, today I'm going to make some pecan pie. And to do it, I, I used to make my own crust, and they were okay. I wasn't the best baker or crust maker there is, but they were all right. But uh, some years ago, uh, I got uh, arthritis and, and neuropathy, and anyways, I tried these pre-made pie crusts, and they're surprisingly pretty decent. So, they, they work out okay. And through trial and error, I found that I liked to use two of them together. So first off, I need to put a little bit of flour. And get a good coat underneath it. And then, it's not terribly, terribly important, but uh, if you can, try to rotate these so they aren't rolled out in the exact same direction. And just trying to press them together a little bit. And then I'll roll them. Just uh, you know, as always, whatever whatever works best for you. If you want to buy a pre-made pie crust already in a baking pan, that's fine. If you want to make your own from scratch, that's perfectly fine. It's all about what you like best. That should be plenty to go in, fill the pan, and give it a nice edge. So what I've been doing this, I've had one and a half cups of pecans toasting in this skillet. And through trial and error and asking other people what they did, I came to the conclusion that, it's, like anything else, it, it's a trade-off. <clears throat> These pecans that are the whole ones were actually just a half a pecan like that. They look really wonderful in the pie. But it can be a bit difficult at times when you're trying to cut into the pie with a knife because there's nowhere for the knife blade to go. So I, I did about 50-50. I chopped about half of them up and left about half of them whole. And it, it works out okay that way. So anyway, I toast them in the pan. It uh, helps to bring the oil to the surface of the uh, pecan and give them a, a deeper flavor, I think. So those are just ready right there. And just go around carefully. Making sure the dough is fully seated into the pan. And then, from there, it's up to you. Some people just take a knife and cut right along the edge and cut the, the dough off. You can uh, roll it up and under if you want. Kind of like that. It's a little awkward doing it backwards for the camera. But uh, whatever kind of mood you're in, whatever looks good to you, however you think you want to do it. You can do a little twist. Actually, this uh, again, <laughs> it's a matter of personal preference, which you think you might like best. This way it works pretty good in the event that you have a little bit of uh, overflow. This is usually provides a high enough uh, crust edge that the overflow isn't a problem. Yeah. 
just like that. And onto the filling. I've got three eggs. And two of these eggs, well first, I'm gonna whip them, beat them, mix them, just a little. To that, I'm gonna add one cup of sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla, And one cup of corn syrup. You can use light or dark either way. I'm also going to use just a little bit of molasses. I'm not going to measure it. I'm just going to pour roughly a, a tablespoon. Doesn't need to be exact. To this I'm also going to add two tablespoons of, of butter. Um, I don't think it's terribly critical whether you use salted or unsalted. If you're watching salt, your salt, just use the unsalted. Uh, this is salted and and that's what's going in there. And before you add the pecans, go ahead and start mixing it up. Make sure you scrape the bottom of the bowl, get everything blended in. Then go ahead and mix the uh, pecans into it. before you even start any of this turn your oven on to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to put this in the oven uh, for approximately approximately 50 minutes you, you may want to check it at about 45 and see how it's doing uh, and you may need to go up to 55 minutes it just kind of depends on the oven and so on as an extra precaution I'm going to use a pizza pan to bake the uh, pie on. Just in case anything overflows, it won't make a horrible, horrible mess in your oven that way. Uh, I just brought it out of the oven. It's been 55 minutes. Uh, I checked it with a knife blade and it, it came out just a little bit of liquid onto the blade. Not very much. So it's not unusual for a little bit to stick to the blade because there's it's really goopy <laughs> a lot of sugary ingredients in this uh, but it needs to cool oh at, at the extreme minimum two hours but that may not be enough uh, you're, you're better off to let it go and cool for a good four hours preferably overnight make this today ahead of time if you can if you try to cut into an hour it's been about 12 hours and it's completely cool now and I'm ready to cut. I think I'm going to try and transfer it out of this pie tin into another one. Uh, this I just bought these pie plates and the manufacturer says they don't recommend you cut uh, anything in them because it will scratch the finish and uh, shorten this lifespan. So maybe I can flip it. Oh, how about that? Pretty slick there.
big slice, slightly, slightly off a off center, but it looks like it's just right. It's firm and set, but the center is still nice and gooey and sticky, and, and uh, it's probably four more calories in it that could possibly count. But anyways, give it a try. It's pretty easy to make, and they are very, very tasty. Uh, I think I make them maybe once a year here at the holidays, but uh, it's definitely... Couldn't gobble good.